Hi, it's Paris from Epic Review Guys, here with the hot off the assembly line, Amazon Fire TV. Epic Review Guys. So if you're wondering, how did Amazon get a TV in that little box? Well, it's like the Apple TV. It's actually a little box that sits next to your television set, hooks up with an HDMI cable, and lets you access content, games, movies, and so forth from the internet. And from your sofa or bed, you can control it with the remote. The Fire TV costs $99. We have a link to it down below this video if you'd like to learn more. Now the Apple TV is also about $99. It's been out for a couple years. The Roku 3, about $99, been out for a year or two. So it seems like Amazon is really late to the game in getting something out for a set-top streaming box, but they go a couple steps further. Let's see what's in the box first, then I'll show you some of those new features in action. And by the way, this comes pre-registered to your Amazon account. So any content you purchase, movies or other things, you should have access to them from this little box. Which, oh, this is a little box. I have the Roku 3 and it's got to be at least twice the thickness of this, but it is fairly heavy. I am surprised by how small this is and it's only when you get to the back, here's where all the action happens. You've got the port for power, HDMI. It does not come with an HDMI cable. If you don't have one, they offer to sell you that separately at the time you buy this. Here's an optical audio port if you have that type of sound system. They've included a regular wired LAN connection port and at the end is a USB port. Also in the box, very simple setup guide. Your remote, a lot smaller also than the Roku remote, but the thing I love with my Roku 3 remote is you can plug, it has a headphone jack and you can plug your headphones in, mutes the TV, lets you listen through the earbuds, doesn't bother the person sleeping next to you in bed. That's a good one. The transformer and cable to power it. And then a couple batteries for the remote control. I mentioned the size difference with my Roku 3 box, which is here. The Roku 3 box is fatter top to bottom, but you can see it is smaller. And the Amazon TV is quite a bit heavier also. And it should simply be a matter of taking the HDMI cable from here, putting it in here, going through the setup, and I should be able to use this. There's the screen that welcomes you on the remote. Press play. It's going to look for Wi-Fi networks. The Fire TV does work on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequencies, which is nice because for most people, 5 gigahertz isn't nearly as crowded, so you may have better results with one or the other. At least you have the choice to choose between them. This only came out two days ago, but there's an update already. This is one of the features I mentioned that goes beyond what the Apple TV and the Roku do in terms of controlling content that your kids can get to. I'll have to go through and see what all the options are, but I was glad to see this. Looks like it might come in handy. You can go through and choose to see the latest movies, TV shows, videos that you've purchased. Um, they also have some very interesting games and a separate controller. Looks a lot like the traditional Xbox controller that you can use with this. It's an extra $40 to buy that. Now I can't show the movies and TV shows of course, this being YouTube, but there is a YouTube app on the Amazon Fire TV which I've downloaded and apparently I've got to go back to the computer log into YouTube and go through these steps which will activate this device to let me get into my YouTube account here and then I should be able to watch my YouTube videos and all the rest of the YouTube content. I'm now signed into my YouTube account so I'll take a look at that. Also you can see next to it pair device it allows you to pair up a tablet or your phone so that you can go through find something you're interested in watching there and send it over to the TV so that you can watch the, the content on your TV. All of our channel playlists are accessible down the left edge of the screen and then you can go through and see the different videos in the playlist. Pick on one and it should start it up. There's my brother. So I've just seen the commercial for these new HD sunglasses. All right, there are the options at the bottom. Now, how do we get it to go full screen? They're kind of basically just like the other. Ah, just wait a few seconds, it disappears. The then hit the select button in the middle of the remote, sort of the and it brings style. the controls back up. Now, these and similar to the Amazon parental controls, here when you log into YouTube, if you log in with an account that has the safe search turned on, that will filter out a lot of stuff you might not want your kids seeing. Now the, the second cool feature that the Amazon Fire TV offers that nobody else has before is there's a voice search built into the remote. 
There's a microphone, you push and hold a button, and like speaking to Siri on your iPhone, you speak to your Amazon Fire TV, and if it can find what you're looking for, it'll bring it up. So I'm gonna try it right here and see if it'll work in YouTube search. Epic review, guys. Hey, is there somebody who has that other name? I gotta look into that. Ah, but it didn't find us. So that means it's not, you can't search YouTube with a voice search. Um, it's just the content that Amazon knows about, the movies and TV shows, apparently. Here's a closer look at the remotes. This is the Amazon Fire TV remote. There are, there's no headphone jack or anything else, just the buttons on it. Here's the Roku 3 remote, which is bigger, but it's got volume control buttons right here, the headphone jack here, and it comes with the earbuds so that you can do that private listening. The wrist strap, I think, is also related to the fact that this can be used as a game controller. It, inside it has an accelerometer so it knows which way you're holding it and how you're moving it. And you can play some games on the Roku 3. I thought we would do that more, but we really haven't. With Amazon, though, as I understand it, you can set it up. If you don't want to spend the $40 for that Xbox-type controller that works with the Amazon Fire TV, I believe you can set up your tablet or your smartphone to work as a controller because it already has the accelerometer and so forth in it, and then use that to play the games that are offered through the Amazon Fire TV. Those games really do look kind of interesting, so I'm going to look into that some more. So that's our quick look at the Amazon Fire TV. I think I'm going to keep the Roku 3 on the TV in our bedroom because that private listening where you don't bother the other person while you're listening to the show at night, that is so handy. This Amazon Fire TV will likely go on the living room TV, so I'm particularly interested in the parental control features and how that works. Does that control access to Netflix or anything? If you have Netflix and kids, you probably know when you start it up, you can choose the Just for Kids or the regular Netflix, but there's no control over which one you pick. The kids can just as easily pick the regular Netflix and watch anything. So I'm interested to see if the Amazon Fire TV has a way to limit access to that sort of thing. Something that I am disappointed in with all the set-top streaming boxes, but maybe in particular with this one because it's the newest and had more time to do this, is they don't work with 4K. You, if you have a 4K television you hook this up, this video right now that I'm recording is on a 4K camera and we're uploading it in full 4K, but you won't be able to see it in 4K through the YouTube app with this. So I'm disappointed they haven't got around to putting 4K into that, but I believe it's coming. Other than that, it's a nice $99 set-top streaming box, like the Apple TV, like the Roku 3. If you're interested in learning more about the Amazon Fire TV, we have a link down below. And for those of you waiting for the more Loom reviews, the uh, Monster Tail Loom from Rainbow Loom, we will be doing a special Sunday edition of Epic Review Guys, and that video will be up tomorrow. Check back and see it then. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy. At Epic Review Guys, we give them a try. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows, but before he goes shopping, he watches.